two old guys and there goes one old guy for now as Sydney's lockdown restrictions are over. Yes, Freedom Day today, and why not celebrate Freedom Day with an episode of Two Old Guys in Their Records? And Mike and I decided long ago to press on and provide you some fun segments about our passion and our love for our records. A few weeks ago, we talked about seven inch, four track EPs that were very popular in the 50s, the 60s, and a little bit of the 70s. But Mike, as Mike pointed out to me, that evolved into the 12 inch EP and the 12 inch uh, remixes of the late 70s and 80s that were so, so popular. Yes. And today we're going to look at one of my favorite 12 inch four track EPs from one of my favorite bands ever. Definitely my favorite Australian band. They meant so much to me back then. They were my second concert. You know, they their lyrics were politically charged. They were high energy. They were uh, amazing. And they had one of the most charismatic singers in all the world. Not just in Australia. I'm talking about the world with those huge palms coming out. You know, and that pogo style type of dance. I'm talking about none other than... Come back on the board Midnight Oil, or as we fondly remember, The Oils. Yes, The Oils. And we're going to look at my favourite EP from them. But before that, a little bit of background. You know, they were called The Farm in the 1970s. Uh, you know, Robert Hurst, uh, Andrew James, and of course, Jim McGinney had formed them. Uh, Peter Garrett, the vocalist, joined them via an advertisement. An advertisement in the paper and they even had actually had to rename themselves and it was out of a hat they put a couple of names in there in, and they drew out Midnight Oil and that's how they became Midnight Oil obviously Jimi Hendrix fans yes good on you guys and of course they could have been something different imagine if they were called Southern Cross or Sparta a couple of the other options it would have been different a different world yes and of course Martin Rotti joins uh, the band, their uh, debut album. Now, even though they were high energy live, I mean, they had such a cult following with their their passionate and wild live performances. The album didn't really capture that, but their second album, Head Injuries, just the cover says it all. You know, the cover says with with Peter Garrett ah, at the front, and of course the the back cover is hilarious with him ransacking the studio, the, the record the record studio. Yes. So what happens is. Andrew James leaves, you know, leaves the band due health for health reasons, and you know Peter Gifford joins the band. So they're in a state of flux, right? They've probably got a few tracks ready to put down, but with the change, maybe they weren't ready for a full album. And this EP was released, four original tracks, and it was amazing. Okay, I'm talking about. by Midnight Oil release in 1980 on their own personal Powderworks label. You know, it was only modest in the top 30, you know, it reached the top 30, but what a drag. And it just highlights how culty they were still, you know, at that point, you know, as, you know, being a really little rock act with, you know, socio-political lyrics. They were still alternative. So a modest top 30, yes. But let's have a look at some of these tracks here. The first track is No Time For Game. And, you know, I love everything about it. It looks at, you know, growing up as a teenager in a contemporary world and how alienating it is and how, you know, highly pressured it is. But I love the way Peter Garrett begins the song with Let's Rock and there is just this groove that kicks in and you can imagine him sort of dancing across the stage. Yes, every time, you know, there's there's that break, you know, of, of an instrumental or a, or a lead break, you just imagine Peter Garrett just dancing away on stage. It's just amazing. Now, so, this cool groove, so this angst and futility of growing up. You know, some kids have got no time for playtime. Some kids have got no time for games, yes. So there's, you know, wasted passion and the wasted mind. You know, what kind of opportunities have these kids have got if they're just, you know, you know, studying and, you know, getting all this useless information, you know, and sporting aggression, that's it. So an amazing song. I love the way he ad-libs, you know, in the middle of the song and then it breaks into the guitar solos. It is a great rock track. Second up, we've got Knife's Edge. I mean, this is an in-your-face rock song also. And here we're talking about, you know, you know, the rubbish that we hear every day. You know, it's almost like propaganda, you know. You know, I love the chorus. It says, word crimes, bitter lies, bitter crimes, government lies. Like, it's in your face. And he sort of calls out 
to get. Get off that merry-go-round. Yes, get off that merry-go-round and be yourself. So this rock track, you know, in your face. And then last on the, on the EP is a song called uh, I'm the Cure. And of course, it's referencing to uh, drugs. So you've got, you know, I'm the Cure. You know, I'll, I'll bring you peace of mind. I'll bring you uh, instant relief. You know, and he sort of says, I can't handle all this pressure. You know, so this pressure causing this, you know, drug usage. Uh, yes, it's there. So you've, it's quite a bleak EP, isn't it? You know, you've got, you know, the high pressures of growing up as a teenager. You've got this constant propaganda that we're fed, okay? And then you've got this, you know, this high pressure that's causing this drug usage. And what's an anomaly? I want to finish off with the anomaly of the EP, the anomaly of bird noises is this gorgeous instrumental called Wedding Cake Island. Now it's referring to this little island, this rock island off Coogee Beach. And it is a gorgeous piece of music where you've got this shadows like instrumental, beautiful dreamy guitars by Jim McGinney and Martin Rotzi. And you know, even when the organ kicks in, you know, uh, it is very, very cool. It captures the beach because you know, you know, the oils love the beach. This became a surfing anthem. It is beautiful, it is dreamy, and what a way to cap off this great EP, Bird Noises by Midnight Oil. Thank you very much for watching. Well, did you ever buy Bird Noises? Did you love the oils? Did you love Peter Garrett? Did you love the band? Tell us all about it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, like us on Facebook. Share this episode with all your friends. Yes. And we will see you with another episode of maybe another favorite 4-Track EP or maybe a remix. Oh,